Hello everyone, this is Yoshif Not here and welcome back to the second part of the tutorial where I'm talking about turbulence modeling. In the first part I was talking about turbulence models and I showed you the source code of the simple foam solver. And now I will start with the case setup. For that I will enter the tutorial folder of simple foam. And I will show you again the geometry. We have here on the left hand side an inlet with a width of 6 cm, an outlet on the right hand side with a width of 9 cm, and in between we have a step. And we will set the inlet boundary conditions so we have a Reynolds number of approximately 44,000. So this geometry does not exist within the tutorial folders of OpenFoam, but there is a very similar case which is called Pitts Daily. And I will make a copy of Pitts Daily and I modify that to the tutorial. So Pitts Daily. And I will call it backward facing step underscore base case. I will enter this case we have zero constant and system and if i show you what we have inside those folders in zero we have p and u the pressure divided by density and velocity and then we have four additional quantities we will not use this new tilde we will need these three quantities epsilon k and nu t for the k epsilon model at least in constant we have the polymesh folder, then RS properties where we set the turbulence model and transport properties where we will set our physical viscosity. And in system we have control dict FV schemes and FV solution. Now before I do anything, I prepared here a block mesh dictionary. I will just copy this block mesh dictionary into the backward facing step uh, tutorial and I will replace the Pitts Daily Block Mesh Dictionary that we just copied. I will replace this and I will immediately take a look at the Block Mesh Dictionary that I just copied here. This is it and I will put a download link below this video into the comments. So you can download this block mesh dictionary or you can just stop the video and copy the values from the video. Good. Then I use a convert to meters of 0 0.1. If you do not understand the entries here, then go and check my tutorial on block mesh. I use three blocks. One two and three blocks and for that I need 16 vertices and I use four boundaries at least here an outlet an inlet a lower wall and an upper wall so an inlet an outlet a lower wall and an upper wall I do not specify the, the empty boundaries here because block mesh will automatically create those and um, this is it. So actually, before I do anything else, I will create the block mesh before I forget it. Enter block mesh. Good. Now, constant poly mesh and boundary. Here we have five boundaries instead of four before because we have outlet, inlet, lower wall, upper wall, and we have the, the empty boundaries called default faces. This is the default name for the empty boundaries and we will use another name in zero called front, front and back. And this defines the direction in which the equation should not be solved because we are doing two dimensional simulations. So I will save this with control O and I exit with control X and now I enter zero and I will open up at first P which is pressure divided by density as you see here then we initialize 
the p-values in the whole domain with zero. We use a von Neumann boundary condition on the inlet, zero gradient. We fix the value of p to zero on the outlet. So we assume atmospheric pressure there. And on the wall, we also use zero gradient. And here, as I mentioned before, we use the name front and back instead of default faces. So this is why I changed the value in constant polymesh boundary. And this is the empty boundary. And if I open up the velocity, we initialize the velocity with zero, zero, zero. Then we fix the velocity on the inlet to a certain value. We have to calculate that. So we have a Reynolds number of approximately 44,000. So we have a fully turbulent flow. On the outlet, we use zero gradient. On the walls, we use fixed value zero, 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 which is the no slip boundary condition. Good, now I have to calculate this value for the velocity. And we want to have a Reynolds number of approximately 44,000. So the Reynolds number is given by velocity multiplied by our characteristic length scale divided by the kinematic viscosity. And this equals to, so we want to calculate the velocity. Our length scale is 0 0.06 on the inlet divided by the viscosity and I will use a viscosity of 10 to the power of minus 5 which is more or less air and this should equal be equal to 44,000 okay now we want to calculate the velocity and I will do that here in LibreOffice because here I can do it very fast so I want to calculate the velocity so 44,000 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 5 divided by 0 0.06 and this will give my velocity which is 7.333 I will use this value in U in the positive x direction here from the left hand the flow is going from the left hand side to the right hand side in the positive x direction so I will set the value here to 7.333. I save it with control O, exit with control X. And now I will take a look at these three values. I, I will delete this new tilde because we do not need it. And I will start with K. So here you see that we initialize K with a certain value and we have, we will fix the value on the inlet. And we will use zero gradient on the outlet and we use the so-called wall functions on the walls and if you do not know what wall functions are I pulled up here a Wikipedia page and wall functions are a specific way to describe the velocity close to the wall and here you have uh, diagram of the velocity and especially the, the dimensionless velocity as a function of the dimensionless distance from the wall. So y plus is the dimensionless distance, is the wall coordinate as it says here. It is dimensionless and here it, you see how you calculate those dimensionless values. And the point is that close to the wall you have a linear dependence of your dimensionless velocity on the dimensionless distance and far away from the wall you have a logarithmic dependence and in between you have a transition region now the question is what does close and what does far away mean and here if I scroll down they give certain values so this viscous sublayer this uh, uh, this region here goes until a y plus value of more or less 5 and then the transition region is between 5 and 30. Now if they give these values you will find different values in, in different publications so and this is actually dependent on your flow so if you're not sure about these values of 5 and 30 go and talk to your advisor. But we will just accept these values. So 5 and 30 and the point of wall function is, 
is that you do not depict this viscous sublayer with your grid, but rather you include this sublayer into your first cell. So your first cell should include this viscous sublayer and your y plus value should be between 5 and 30. At least for the tutorial and we just take these values from this Wikipedia page. Again, talk to your advisor for your actual simulation in your thesis. Okay. These are wall functions and now I actually want to calculate the inlet value 4k and for that I will use this equation. So I will just open up my LibreOffice and I will calculate 1.5 multiplied by our inlet velocity multiplied by 0 0.05 so I will assume a turbulent intensity of 5% squared so I will use a value of 0 0.2 this is my estimation for k on the inlet and I will initialize the value in the entire domain but again remember that there is a transport equation for k so in the domain k will be calculated throughout the simulation but on the inlet the value will be fixed to 0 0.2 so I save this now with Control O again Control X and I open up Epsilon again we will fix Epsilon on the inlet we use zero gradient and we use wall functions on the walls now for Epsilon I use this formula so I will open up again my LibreOffice so 0 0.09 to the power of 0 0.75 now I multiply this with k to the power of 1.5 divided by L which is 0 0.07 multiplied by our characteristic length scale which is in our case 0 0.06 enter and now I have an epsilon value of 3.54 let's just say I will use this value here I will fix this on the inlet and I will initialize the value in the entire domain with this 3.54 3.54 and also here okay like this and again for epsilon we will also have a transport equation so this uh, value will change throughout the simulation but on the inlet we will fix it okay so now I can exit and let's open up new t we initialize this value with zero i could change it but i will just leave it as it is and on the inlet and on the outlet we will calculate the value and we use wall functions like in for k epsilon and also here we use wall functions on the walls so now we set up the initial values i want to show you in constant errors properties here we set the k epsilon model and in constant transport properties we set the viscosity to 10 to the power of minus 5 as i mentioned before and i will use a newtonian fluid now in system in control dict i will use latest time yes and i will go until 2000 and here i have a delta t if i go back to the source code as i mentioned here it says time equals but this is not a physical time this is actually iteration number equals and since i want to have iteration number one two three four five so on until 2000 here i use a delta t but again t is not a physical time but rather an iteration number so this is why i use here one and i want to save after 100 iterations and 200 300 and so on and go until 2000 and here i have functions which are very handy but i will delete them because i do not want to use them for the sake of this tutorial so i delete them with control k 
and I save with control O and exit with control X. Now in FB schemes, as you see here in the DDT schemes, we have steady state because we do not have uh, partial time derivatives and the physical time. And here in the diversion schemes, we do not have a default value. So we have to define all the diversion schemes. And in the Pitts Daily tutorial, they use a first order scheme upwind, but I will use here the second order scheme linear upwind. And within the linear upwind scheme, I will use for the gradient discretization, the default discretization. So I will use it for you. We use the linear term here. So I just put in grad u and linear upwind grad k. This is the same because we are using a default value. So here we have for both the gradient u and the gradient k scheme, the linear scheme. And the same I will use for epsilon. Up wind grad epsilon. And we do not need these entries for the k epsilon model, but we need this. And I will use the linear scheme here, which is also a second order scheme. So I save this. And in FV solution, I will use a tolerance for P 10 to the power of minus six. Also here and for U and K and Epsilon, I will also use 10 to the power of minus six. I will delete these residual controls here and I will use zero non-orthogonal correctors, which is the number of loops here. and you always solve the pressure equation at least once. And this value is the number of additional iterations. So we will not do it only once. And here I you find the relaxation factors. And these are factors. Um, if, for example, if we enter here the new iteration, then for P in this case, you will take 30% of the new pressure value and 70% of the old pressure value and weight those two 30% 70% and take this p value pressure divided by density again and with this you will have a more stable simulation but your convergence will be slower but this these relaxation factors can help with the stability of your simulation. So, but I will use here 0 0.3 for P and uh, for UK and Epsilon, I will use 0 0.7. So I save this. Now I set up the initial conditions, the grid and the values in system. Now I will create the dummy file for Paraview. And I will open up Paraview and I will take a look at the boundaries, the geometry and the grid. Okay, so apply. And here you see the geometry. And I want to show you the geometry as it is. So outlet is here on the right hand side. The inlet is here on the left hand side lower wall is here and upper wall is here and then front and back front and back is here as you see and these two planes define the direction in which the the equation should not be solved and in this case this is the z direction so we will solve the the equations in the x and the y direction. And if I show you now the grid, I put a finer grid here after the step and the coarse grid close to the to the outlet and close to the inlet. OK, 
Okay, so now I exit Paraview and I exit also the base case and now I will make copies of the base case and call apps, k epsilon then k omega and lrr and now I can start with the simulations but before I do that I would like to stop recording now I hope that you enjoyed the second part of the tutorial and that you learned something. I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the third part of the tutorial.